Alright, hello and welcome back to the channel. So, I wanted to go ahead and give you guys something interesting today. I hope you'll find this interesting. I came up with this. Uh, these are my top 10 things to do as a cybersecurity professional. So, or if you're interested in breaking into the industry. So, these are not all inclusive. This is not necessarily going to be an exact science. These are just things that I've noticed as uh, trends in the industry, things that have worked for me and allowed me to be able to advance my career and also be able to be successful. Sometimes these things that are on this list, they were not necessarily easy. I'm not going to sit here and say I'm an expert in all things and all be all of everything. I am a cloud ninja or a programming ninja or an IT Ninja, though I consider myself to be pretty well read on just about everything IT, um, minus a few key areas where I'm just not an expert in, but I can generally converse with almost anybody. I can talk to anybody about IT, um, and I'm very passionate about learning. If I don't know something, then I will try my best to become an expert in it in a short amount of time. And that's what has allowed me to overcome maybe some of the gaps in knowledge. But you might say, Chris, well, what am I supposed to do about it's a pandemic right now. Well, it's a perfect time to break into the industry. And there are many different free resources that you can use to get into IT. You don't have to have a wealth of certifications or advanced degrees. You don't have to have pieces of paper that say that you're able to take a class and sit in a, in a college class and take tests. Now, those things do help. They help you on resumes, but but by no means are they the end all be all of how you get your foot in the door. So, and also some of these things will also be what I would like to call, they help you stay competitive. So now some people might say that, well, you know, I was told by this person or that person, I had to have this certification to get that job. You know, you gotta have CH or you gotta have security plus, or you gotta have uh, OSCP if you wanna be an ethical hacker, no. These are not things that you need to, to yes, they're, they're definitely goals, but a lot of it comes down to work ethic, your attitude, your passion, your drive. Do you look at a, a device like your smartphone and do you, do you try and make it do other things? Maybe you have uh, a device like the Raspberry Pi, which if I can figure out where I put mine, I would show you guys, but I plan on doing many different things uh demos to help you guys get better acquainted especially right now and to me this is the coolest thing about why we have this medium now um to talk to each other during the pandemic it is something that there are always going to be people that are considered essential there's going to be people that manage servers there's going to be data center people there's going to be sock analysts there's going to be threat hunters there's going to be penetration testers. There's going to be regular help desk personnel. People, somebody has to fix the hardware. Someone's got to fill up the printer when the printer runs out of ink. So there's lots of different things you might be asked to do as a cybersecurity professional that you might say, well, it's not exactly like the most attractive thing. It's not hacking into the mainframe and making off with all the uh, vital state secrets. But so... So these are the top 10 things I came up with. Um, of course, keep in mind that this may not be necessarily 100% um, gospel, but if I've looked around many of the different surveys that come out, like Gartner and IDG and other things, and I've noticed these, these seem to be recurring themes. So keep in mind this is not all inclusive, but number one, certifications. So certifications are important again i said they're not the end all be all but they're a good way to advance your knowledge so certifications you know like comptia ec council uh, isc squared sans you know there are many different certifications out there and it's, it's almost like a jungle out there so don't think that you have to have one certification or one you know you know get multiple certifications if you can now some certifications uh you know, may be too expensive. Like there are some classes that are that are several thousands upon thousands of dollars, and they're just not something you want to do. Other people might have certifications that you're supposed to get because your employer told you to, 
and it's part of the contract and you got to get this job and you don't get the job you're going to get fired or you're going to get pulled off the contract and you're going to get sent home or somebody else is going to get pulled in to take over your position so i understand all those things number two learn linux linux there are tons and tons of things you can do with linux linux is, is everywhere for example if we open up the microsoft store we can actually go in here and we can see that microsoft has kindly decided to allow windows to run linux amazing who would have thought that we would now be seeing linux in the microsoft store now i'm not going to say this is the best way to run linux but it is, is a way to run linux even notice that they had the penetration testing distribution kali linux there so there's windows terminal there are terminals upon terminals so you can run a linux terminal on your windows machine amazing so linux will open lots of doors for you but to many people linux is scary and that's okay learn command line so what i mean my command line when you open up your windows prompt and you type cmd and you start performing tasks so you type in commands like ip config to try and find out or you want to ping something to see if it's operational so learn how to work with your command line know how to if you don't know what a command does figure out the syntax so that's also included with powershell i include powershell on in the command line because there are many different things that powershell can do for you so powershell has commandlets right so powershell even has nice graphical interfaces that you can use to manipulate of course you can run command line on linux unix if you have a mac computer you've already got a command line and there are tons and tons of resources that are out there that help you learn linux command line learn cloud well if i <clears throat> haven't been clear on the proclivities for cloud there are many different resources for cloud you can go to cloud.google.com you can get a free trial up to three hundred dollars in free credits 20 different products now you got to put in a credit card number but again this is free resources so free tier so they basically you can do containers you can do virtual machines you could do big data you could do uh machine learning you want to train your machine if you're a coder and you want to do machine learning it's amazing the things you can get for uh for free these days and the time when everything seems more expensive and your dollar seems to go less and less the cloud is one of those things that it's just amazing that you can find uh what you can find in the cloud same thing with amazon you want to find the free tier there's some things that are always going to be free and that's great you can get 12 months of all these different types of services maybe you don't want to go with one of the big providers what about Linode Linode has been around actually longer than Amazon and it's a cloud that is tailored to developers what about DigitalOcean so there are many different cloud providers you may not even know about all these and I'll put all these links in the description of the video as well you can sign in and deploy all kinds of things databases servers you can deploy if you want to deploy a minecraft server in the cloud you can do that if you want to deploy some type of web application maybe you want to write a mobile application all kinds of stuff you can do with the cloud and all empowered by the command line so if you understand linux and you understand the command line you can understand the cloud i often say that the cloud is simply just virtualization with somebody else's hardware if you understand virtualization which we'll talk about in a minute create a github account if you're not familiar with github github is owned by microsoft github is a code repository you can actually start learning github without knowing any code at all you can actually create your own hello world app create a repository and it walks you through step by step you don't have to do anything but what else does github have for you besides code well you can type in cybersecurity and you can find all kinds of resources you can find tools this one is 
It says CISA Gov. How to run. So there are many free repositories out there that provide all kinds of resources. Python, JavaScript, Jupyter Notebook, wikis, wiki pages. You can find links upon links of cybersecurity resources. Many schools now use GitHub for their learning because it's a place to provide information. So it's, again, it's targeted towards developers, but it's not required and it's free and you can connect GitHub to a great many other things. So what about uh, GitHub? Attend a cybersecurity conference. Well, of course, these are things that uh, are more difficult these days thanks to COVID, but a lot of the developer conferences, Black Hat, DEF CON, they did their first virtual conferences. So we have coming up uh, not too long from now, spring trainings, we have Black Hat USA, usually in the summertime. So, so start the planning now, maybe by then, it won't be virtual and you'll be able to actually go to one. What about DEF CON? So DEF CON, another co conference. And you can go see, once the conferences happen, they post a lot of their research and papers and information. So you can get all kinds of education here just from following one of these sites. There's also, of course, RSA conference, which is a pretty popular place for security minded people to talk. So lots of different sessions. So virtual experience, May 17th to May 20th, 2021. So you can find the different topics that were discussed, everything from mobile and internet of things. So it's a great time to be in security and cybersecurity because there's just so much out there. Number seven, always be learning. So this is something that a lot of the older cybersecurity folks may struggle with. Now it's it's tough to learn a new skill, you know, and there's not always training budgets, and your boss is always asking you to do do more with less, and they never give you enough time to do the job. It seems so. So try to always be learning, even if you spend five, 10 minutes a day just to learn some new skill or some new tool. And we may do a video just on, on that, how you can do that yourself. So give back to cybersecurity in some way. What does that mean? Well, share, share the information. You know, talk to people, talk to your family, talk to your friends. Maybe you're, you got a family member that's struggling with a new phone they just bought at, at Christmas or over the holidays and they don't know what to do with it. Or maybe they don't know anything about security and they need help securing their Facebook because their Facebook's just been hacked. Or they don't know what creating a good password means. So these are all things that you absolutely should do as a way to further yourself and to help also to help others. So give and pay it forward. You know, help new people that are brand new to cybersecurity, give them the knowledge that you have. If you're an expert and you're, a, you're an IT ninja out there, Go, go for it. So of course, be humble. I can't say enough things about being humble because these are things that it's difficult for many people to do. So be humble, you're not gonna know everything. Even if you are the best at uh, your job and what you do, you're not always gonna know everything and that's okay. So I recommend learning Kubernetes, containers, virtualization. So that's a, that's a lot, right? So so a great place I like people to start with virtualization is VirtualBox. VirtualBox is a free virtualization solution. Basically, you can download a flavor of Linux and you can set up yourself, your own environment to run multiple operating systems. You can see on my system, I've got VirtualBox running multiple things running some i have some linux i have some my hacking virtual machine i have a I, intrusion detection system i have my uh windows servers so i can run all that as virtual machines and they're basically just for all intents and purposes they run as a regular computer they look like a computer 
they have a network interface card, they have an IP address, they can be on the network. So VirtualBox is a great place to get started with virtualization besides the cloud. So what about containers? Well, containers are kind of a new thing and they, they're not well known by some organizations, but Docker is a very popular technology for containers. What exactly is a container? Well, it's basically taking your software and putting it into a little box. You take your software and you put it into this little box here like this. So you have your application and then you have another application and another. And then you have Docker. Well, what is Docker? Docker is basically the control engine for your containers. The Docker is, is a client you'll download to manage all your container functions. So Docker runs on the host operating system, which in my case is Windows, and then it runs on top of your infra infrastructure. It could be a server, but Docker lets you run things like applications. It lets you run operating systems. It lets you run a database as a container. The ben one benefit of the containers is that it's much more lightweight than virtual machines. So containers are very popular by developers because it allows you to get up and running very easily without having to manage all the servers in the background. And there's all kinds of, of free training out there. So, so definitely check out Docker. There's other container platforms. Um, then you have Kubernetes, which is basically just a fancy word for saying orchestration. So, <clears throat> so what is Kubernetes versus Docker? Well, you know, if you want to run things like microservices, so maybe you want to run something in Microsoft Azure, you want to run. So it's not a, really an either or. They're two different things or they're two complementary things. So Kubernetes allows you to orchestrate your containers. Uh, Docker is just allow, enables you to run different containers. So we'll probably do some videos on virtualization, Kubernetes containers, just so you can see more about what it is. But, you know, it, it's still amazing to me that you know, this list keeps growing. Maybe it'll be top 20 things eventually. Right now, it's top 10, but I added a, a uh, one more. The learn a scripting language, Python, PowerShell, or Ruby. Python is available for free. It comes standard on most Linux distributions. It is the language of choice for many security programs, many scripts. Uh, can't say enough things about Python. We could do a whole class about it, but it's used for web development. It's used for scientific applications calculations it's used for software system administration you can automate tasks with python all kinds of neat stuff you can do all you got to do is go here and you can click downloads you can download it for windows linux mac os many other applications so python uh version 2 is still around although it is technically end of life but version 3 is going to be the new future so Python is a very powerful programming language. So, so I'm going to give you a resource here in a minute, a free resource where you can go and find out more about Python. So these are my top 10 things. Really, the be humble probably should be at the end, but I think humility is, is everywhere. So I moved it up a couple of notches. So I hope this is uh, beneficial for you guys. Now let's look at a couple other things. Resources. So I promise you some free resources and I'm going to deliver. One, w3schools.com. I can't say enough great things about this website. It is literally one of my favorite sites for learning new programming languages, new tools, whether it's JavaScript, whether it's CSS, whether it's uh, SQL, PHP, Python, Java. So if you wanna learn Python, you can go in here and you can start learning Python right away. It has tutorials. You can literally try out the tutorial yourself. You can actually run the code. And it will run the code in a box for you. So you get to learn right along with the examples and the real world stuff. Linux Foundation Training. These are a great website that has many different, some free courses, some not free, but um, it's designed to mesh with some of the other initiatives like cloud and DevOps big data
So what else? CIO.com. So it's a great site for tech news, analysis, blogs, all that kind of good stuff. So daily news, um, everything from interviewing to cybersecurity hacking. They have a whole resource library. You can sign up for their insider newsletter. A lot of great stuff. They won't necessarily spam you. They're, they're pretty good. Then we have CSO Online. They used to have this daily dashboard and I can never find it anymore, but it is a great site for staying up on the latest vulnerabilities, hacks, breaches. So it's very similar to uh, CIO. Then we have dark reading. So if you want to get up on the latest and greatest dark reading material, usually to do with offensive security or uh, ethical hacking, all kinds of stuff here. So you can look at analytics, attacks, data breaches, so much stuff. So then we have CNAT. Of course, CNAT is kind of a, a technology channel, but it's good to see what the latest and greatest tech that's out there. Latest and greatest uh, consumer devices, because those are the devices that have end up having vulnerabilities. And then there is Threat Post. That post is a great website for news, articles, um, latest, you know, patches, bugs, all kind of stuff here. We may do um, some more articles, but these are these are some of the sites I use just about every day. Hack Read and Hacker News. They're how I, before I, when I'm having my morning coffee and I'm looking for something to go after, a target to go after. We've got. Hack read. If you just type in the hackernews.com or hacker news, you get something different. But looky there, we were just talking about Docker and containers. Critical Docker container escape bug affects Microsoft Azure. So we have a proof of concept here. So usually these articles are really well written. They may reference other sites, but they'll have a at least an example of, of that attack so you can see things in real time. So Brian Krebs and SecTools.org. I've talked about SecTools in my Nmap video. SecTools is where you can get tons and tons of free tools um, for the taking. And then you have DistroWatch. DistroWatch.com, put the fun back into computing. Well, if you love Linux like I do, there are so many different flavors of Linux. Like what, over 100 top flavors right here of Linux? Um, you can post in the comments what your favorite flavor of Linux is. I'm partial to Manjaro, but there are other Linux flavors that I really like as well, like Pop OS, um, just because of how clean it looks. So it's a great, it's a great time to get into uh, Linux, the cloud, all kinds of, of stuff at your disposal. Um, I really hope that this video was interesting for you guys. I hope that you got a lot out of it. I hope that it was, uh, make sure that you go over to my YouTube channel, subscribe. Um, you can go over here and you can, it's Techno Soldier Gaming, but again, um, I'm doing more tech stuff, so um, I may change up the logo at some point, but I do everything from gaming to all my tech videos, building my ethical hacking playlist. Uh, let me know what you wanna see me do on here. From, I'm trying to hit 100 subscribers and then I want to hit uh, a thousand subscribers so I can start monetizing really I just I'm doing this because I love sharing stuff with you guys so um, that's what I really want to do that's what I'm passionate about I want to say thank you guys so much for watching follow me over on uh, Twitter army ninja captain follow me on Facebook I have a tech blog over there uh, it's the Chris Hefner tech blog follow me over on rumble at tech soldier 
gaming um also so rumble is a new one I'm still kind of learning the platform but rumble uh techno soldier gaming there's lots of cute little viral videos over there so follow me on there comment over there definitely want to uh engage as many of you as i can if you're an it professional and you want to share the knowledge maybe you want to collaborate sometime let's absolutely do it so thanks so much guys and we'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.